corner. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You look like you're doing good. I'm having fun. Well, all right. So, what's the name of your new album or your recent album? The new single is called She Makes Dirt Look Good. Right. And the album? And the album is called The Road Home. Okay, The Road Home. Because I wanted to get that out right up front. Why is it called The Road Home? Well, there's a song on there called The Road Home. And uh, I just felt like... You know, whenever I put together all these songs, I, I was able to write 12 of the 14 songs on the record. Well, I noticed your name is the primary writing yeah. name. Yeah, and uh, so I sat down to write that song probably 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And uh, it's just one of those, th the song tells what it feels like to be, you know, in, in music we all have the stereotype. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks that musicians are womanizers. And, you know, we've got girls everywhere, and it's just, we're always gone, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hiding one. <laughs> but anyway, but so, you know, I wanted to tell the story from the perspective of the musician, what it's right. really like right. whenever you actually have somebody at home that's waiting for you, and you want to get to that person, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so that's what it's about, you know, it it's it just talks about all the things that he sees on the road, you know, it's, you know, he's, it, there's parts in it that says, you know, uh, you know, I love the bright lights, but I miss your blue eyes. Right. You know that kind of stuff, and so that's what it's like whenever you're when you're in love with somebody and you're actually a touring musician. And when I think about that song, I think about the music video. I see, I see feet propped up on the bus dash, you know, and wind. I mean, the rain coming down, uh -huh. the windshield wiper, and you see the headlights going through the rain. That's what I saw when I wrote the song. Good, great. Well, I want to compliment you on She Makes Dirt Look Good. It's doing good. And the reason I want to compliment you is that you have taken something that used to be the, the meat of country music, and that's a play on words and a little misdirection with words. Right. Um, that doesn't sound like a terribly complimentary title. It doesn't. <laughs> and yet, it's a love song. It is. Yeah, it's just a cool... And that's what I tell people, you know, like I go into these radio stations and they're like, okay, so she makes dirt look good. First time I saw that, I was like, oh gosh, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, really, if you think about the song, it's, I tell them the same thing. It's like, if you want to if you want to talk about a real love thing and do it in a funny kind of way, that's mm -hmm. what this song is. Every man wants to marry up. Mm -hmm. And every woman wants to feel like she's the reason he married up. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what this song's about. Okay. It's about a guy who thinks he's just never going to... Never thought he'd amount to anything, and then, he, then this girl comes along, and, and then now she makes him feel good. And, and you know, we are so inundated, not in Texas, not in Oklahoma, but we are so inundated out of Nashville with these very sexist songs where it's all guy fantasy. Right. You know, they call it bro country, I call it guy fantasy country. We can um, call it crap if we want, right? We could call it crap, I okay. think that would be good. Okay. But this song of yours says not only that I love her and that she is good to me, but she makes me better. Absolutely. Now, if there's a more romantic idea than that, I haven't run across it. Well, you know, I'm kind of a romantic, you know. Yeah, well, good for you. <laughs> and kind of a traditionalist. Yeah, I am. You know, I grew up on, I grew up, everybody says it, but I really did. I remember my, one of my first, you know, memories of music growing up was I was in the back of the family car, and my dad, you know, we were listening to the, one of my favorite songs was Rainbow Stew mm -hmm. by Hag, you know. And I remember we were in the back of the Great car one day. Great song for a kid to sing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and I was sitting sit in the back just, I mean, singing at the top of my lungs is Rainbow Stew, you right. know. And my dad looked over, he goes, who sings that song? I said, Haggard. He goes, let him. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, great. I sound like crap. Now, what has made you decide that that what we call traditional, mm -hmm. that that's the route for you to go because you live in a time when a lot of people are going in a lot of different directions and they say country is new, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like the value in country is not so new. So what made your decision? Well, I, it wasn't a conscious decision to be honest with you. It's just how I, how I grew up mm -hmm. and the music I grew up with. And to be honest with you, I mean, unless I'm going to a radio station, a radio tour, once I get in range of that station, I listen to the radio. Other than that, my radio does not come on in my truck, ever. 
I do not listen to radio. That's very sad to hear a person well, who spent her whole life working in radio. No, no, no. What I mean, no, what I mean though is, is because, um, you know, I lived in Nashville for eight years. Yes, I do. And I wrote songs for a living, and I, I adopted that policy of that if I'm writing to what radio is playing, mm -hmm. I'm two years behind. Amen. It's because you know, in by the time I get a song written. And then I go record a demo of it, and then it gets to a publisher who wants it, and then the publisher finally gets around to getting it to an artist or to a label. Mm -hmm. Label gets it to an artist. Artist finally gets to cut, start to cut another record, and the record gets to the store. It's probably two years. Two years, sure. So if I'm writing for what's there now, I'm I'm late. So the best thing to do I've always found is write who you are. You know, people always ask me. You know, sometimes I'll play these writers' things, and people are like, "Man, you're a really good writer." What's your, what would you tell people that want to be a writer? And I tell them all exactly the same thing. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, but I will tell you she's a genius when it comes to writing mm -hmm. because she, does, she writes what she knows. Mm -hmm. That's the key to writing. If you've never been divorced, don't write about being write divorced. If you've never been drunk, don't write about whiskey. Mm -hmm. Write what you know, and it'll translate to the audience. And you do know that that is what all great writers, regardless of the form they write in, that's what they tell everybody who asks them. Yeah. yeah. That is the key. What is the point? You can try it. Mm -hmm. You can make it all up, and it will be hollow. Right. Yeah, it won't translate. Mm -hmm. It just will not. Okay, so if I want to know where Tommy Joe is appearing, where do I find that out? You can go to TommyJoeWilson.net. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter. Okay. I'm a twit, evidently. You're a twit. <laughs> so you can twit me. At, uh, TJ, at TJW Band okay. or Facebook, Tommy Joe Wilson. Good. Well, that's all easy. Yeah. Now, tell me about Skip Ewing because that's oh, come on now, fascinating. Come on. What? That's the king. Well, he is. I mean, but how many people even know he exists now? Not enough. You know, and I was thinking, seeing my father and me so in love, we could go on and on. Oh yeah, he wrote "Love Me" for Colin Ray. Right. He he made. Brian White, who he is. Yes. You know, he wrote with someone else's star. He wrote Rebecca Lynn, right. which Rebecca Lynn is actually Skip's daughter. Oh, That's her okay. name. I didn't know that. First time I met Skip, you have time for a little short story? Yeah. First time I ever met Skip, I went to the Nashville Zoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, my ex-wife, she had a little 18-month-old son at the time. And so when you first walk in the zoo, there's a white tigers behind the glass. Yes. And uh, so they had a little rail there. So I set him up on the rail and literally within probably 30 seconds, this little girl gets set up on the rail. And uh, mind you, I've, I'm new to Nashville at this point. I didn't know a lot of people. Right. So I look over this little girl and I look at the parents and it was Skip holding Rebecca Lynn up on the, and me being a huge Skip fan, you know what I mean? I felt like I just met Elvis. I bet you did. And I was like, oh Lord, what am I gonna do now? You know, you can't look like you're just totally <laughs> blown away. I'm you gotta sure have you some can. composure, you know? <laughs> So I didn't even tell Skip that day that I was a writer or a singer or uh -huh. anything. You know, we just kind of let the kids play. Smart. And then the wives and kids were up doing their thing, and I wound up walking around, you know, the zoo all day with my one of my songwriting heroes. What a wonderful story. Yeah. And, that's man, that guy is, I mean, if you ever want to know how to turn a phrase, that's the king of, of knowing how to twist things and make things rhyme internally that you normally wouldn't hear. You know, that's that's what I love to do. Super. So if you need a song written, look for Tommy Joe Wilson. And if you want to hear a yes. great song, listen for She Makes Dirt Look Good. Thank you.